In this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at the rectangular coordinate system, and then once we understand how to plot points in the rectangular coordinate system, we're going to find the distance between two points, and then we're going to find the midpoint of a line segment that connects those two points. So let's first begin by refreshing our memory on what is the uh, rectangular coordinate system. So the rectangular coordinate system works like this. You start with an axis, um, which is our number line in, say, the uh, horizontal direction, and then we'll have one also going in the positive direction. Oh, let's try that again with my nifty arrow drawing tool. There we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to place some point out here in this space. So what we've basically done is we've applied a horizontal axis and a vertical axis, and to define the coordinates of this point in this system, we're going to drop a line straight down, and we're going to mark on that axis where it crosses, and we're going to mark a line straight across, and call that y, and we will demark the coordinates of this point as an ordered pair x comma y. So you'll have some numerical value from the x-axis so that first coordinate or the first value in your ordered pair measures how far left and right you are and then the y value measures how far up and down you are. So for an example if you were to plot the point 1 comma 2 that would mean you would go 1 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. So that's why we call this the x-axis and we'll refer to this as the y axis. Now we'll be working with this throughout the course, so it's a good um, good bet that you want to be familiar with it as we go forward in future lectures. Um, additionally, one of the things that you'll notice about this um, coordinate system is that the two axes have basically broken up your two-dimensional plane into four quadrants. Um, we typically will refer to this quadrant, meaning this one-fourth of the plane, as quadrant one. This over here is quadrant two. This down here is quadrant three. And of course, this is quadrant four, then. Now, in doing that, we've gone around counterclockwise, and that's going to be a, a common practice for when we start talking about angles as well. We start up here where everything is positive. This is the positive x-axis because it's in the positive direction, which is right, and then the up is going to be the positive y direction, and so everything is positive up here in terms of the point coordinates. Over here, you would have a negative x value and a positive y value. Down in the third chord, uh, quadrant, you have x's are negative, y's are negative, and in the fourth quadrant, you'll have x as being positive and y as being negative. Um, one other point of interest, we will commonly refer to this guy right here in the middle as the origin. The coordinates of the origin, of course, are 0, 0. Our next question is to find what is the distance between two points. And what I mean by the distance between those points is straight line distance. Imagine that you have your coordinate system that we drew up above and we have two points out here in the plane. Okay, We'll say that the coordinates of this first point right here, let's call that x1 comma y1. And let's say that the coordinates of this point over here are x2 y2. Now those will be specific numbers in a given problem, but let's say we've got those two points and we want to find out what is the straight line distance. If I were to draw a line from here, straight up to here, how long is that line? And the easiest way to figure that out is to go back to a very familiar theorem that um, you've probably covered at some point um, in your mathematical um, experience, and it's the Pythagorean theorem that relates the three sides of a right triangle together. If you drop a line straight over to the right and drop one straight down, you form a right triangle. And as we remember from our earlier math courses, that if this length of this side right here is A and the length of this side over here is B, then A squared plus B squared is equal to the length of that side C squared. Okay, It's called the Pythagorean theorem, right? So how do we figure out how long that is? Well, if we if we can figure out how long the sides are, we can figure out how long the hypotenuse is, or that long side up there. So if I, I were to call that long side up above here d, notice then d squared is going to be equal to something squared plus something squared. Now how long 
is this side right here. Well, if this right there is x2, and this right here is x1, then the length between those two is going to be x2 minus x1, and that's the value of your a that goes into your Pythagorean theorem. Now, what's the length of this side? Well, same reasoning applies. This is y1, this is y2. The length of that would be y2 minus y1, so you have a y2 minus y1 squared. Sorry, that should be y2 down here beneath there. Let me erase that real quick. So this is y2 minus y1 quantity squared. All of this is to say that we can take this now, if we take the square root of both sides, you end up with what's called the distance formula. It is the distance between any two points can be found as the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. All right, that's what we'll call the distance formula. So let's apply that in a particular example. So come down here, let's find the distance between the points negative 3, 2, and 6, 0. Now you can plot these pretty quickly on your coordinate system. Let me move that over here. If you go and um, go to negative 3, so negative 3 over here, and then up 2, now you don't have to do this to actually find the distance since this is a nice little algebraic formula. We can actually just go apply it. But I wanted you to see where some of these numbers show up. So if I go to negative 3, 2, that is this location right here. If I go to 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all right, 0 is right there on that line. So we're trying to find that straight line distance right there. So what we'll do is we'll call this x1 and call this y1, call this x2 and this y2. Now, you could very well have assigned it opposite, meaning I could have called this the second point and this the first point. It doesn't matter in the formula up here because the squares will cancel out a negative of having switched those two values. But if you just plug it in, notice what you get is the distance is the square root of x2 minus x1. So take x2, which was 6, minus x1, which is a negative 3 quantity squared, plus y2, which is 0, minus 2 squared. So this becomes a 6 plus 3, because minus a minus makes positive or an addition. So that's 9 squared plus a negative 2 squared, which gives me the square root of 18 plus 4, or the square root of 22. And that is the distance between those two. It's better to leave that in closed form, or if you can reduce that or simplify that radical, that would work as well, as opposed to plugging into a calculator and get a decimal approximation. In some applied examples, it may be reasonable to approximate that, but for now, let's leave it in radical form. Let's take a look at this example. Consider the points a is negative 2, 1, b is 2, 3, and c is 3, 1. We're first asked to plot the points and form the triangle a, b, c. So let me grab my little coordinate drawing tool. You can just draw those with a straight edge or draw those with a line. Right, now, let's plot the points. So negative 2, 1 will be negative 2 to the left and up 1, forming this point right there. The point 2, 3 is going to be positive 2, so that's to the right, and up 3, giving us this point right there. And last of all, you've got point 3, which is 3 to the right, and up 1, which is this point right there. That triangle, formed by these three straight edges, I'm not going to be able to use that tool very well. Let's try that again. I'll just draw it in my hand straight across here. Pretend those are straight lines. I'll do my best with this little tablet pen, but I think that works. You see, that's a triangle, right, if you've got straight lines. The question is, what's the length of each side of the triangle? So remember, this point right here was negative 2, 1. This point up here was 
2 comma 3 and this point down here was 3 comma 1. We're asked to find the length of those three sides. So to find the length of those three sides you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem three times. So the length of AB would be the distance between the point A and the point B. So using B as your second point, A as your first point, so this is x2, y2, x1, y1, you subtract those, you'll get 2 minus and minus 2 squared for your x's, 2 minus and minus 2, plus 3 minus 1 squared, which gives me square root of 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16, 3 minus 2 is, sorry, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, you get the square root of 20, which is, if you break that up, that's 4 times 5, so 2 square roots of 5. That's the length of AB. Now to do um, BC, do the same thing again, only now we're going to use C as point 2, B as point 1, and so using the distance formula, 3 minus 2 quantity squared plus 1 minus 3 quantity squared. That's your x2 minus your x1, or your c minus b on your x-coordinates, y2 minus y1. So that gives me the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, or negative 2 squared, which is 4. The negative cancels out. You end up with a square root of 5. Now let's do ac. Of course, distances are positive always, so it doesn't matter whether I do CA or AC. It's still the same length of a side. AC goes from A to C, so I'm going to take C minus A, 3 minus a minus 2 squared plus 1 minus 1. So that gives me the square root of 5 squared plus 0 squared, which is actually just 5 squared of 25 is 5, which actually you can eyeball this one and see that that is in fact the distance because you don't move in the y direction. You're just going to go a distance 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from A to C. The question that's now asked is, does that form a right triangle? How are we going to test that? Is there anything that we know is true about right triangles that's not true for other triangles? And the answer is yes. We can check the Pythagorean theorem. We check that and if side squared plus side squared equals hypotenuse squared then we know that we have a right triangle. So we have the three lengths of the sides, we'll use those as side, side, and hypotenuse. Now which one has to be the hypotenuse? It has to be the longest of the three sides which you can eyeball from the graph that I've drawn, we're looking to see is AB squared plus BC squared equal to AC squared. If that's the case, then it's a right triangle. So let's check. What is AB? That's 2 square roots of 5. So square that plus what is BC? That is the square root of 5 squared. Alright, so let's do that arithmetic and the question is does that equal 25? AC squared. So 2 square roots of 5 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 5, which is 20, because square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. Square root of 5 squared is 5 also, so you end up with 25, which is in fact 5 squared, so that checks. It is, yes, a right triangle. One last question in this example is what's the area of the triangle that we had drawn above? All right, the triangle that looks something to this effect right here. Okay, how do you find the area of a triangle? Well, you have to remember from earlier courses that if you have a right triangle, if this is the base and this is the height, the area is one half base times height. Okay. And in fact, it works even if you don't have a right triangle. If you have something like this, where this is h, and the whole length down here is the base. Now in our case, on our triangle that we have drawn above, since this is a oh, right triangle, like this, and this is the right angle right here, we could treat this as the base, and this as the height, and then the area would be one-half base. Now what was the length of this side over here? That was, if you look at your notes, that was BC, right, which was the square root of 5. 
what was this one over here? That was a b, which was two square roots of five. If we multiply those together, we get one half times two times five, because square root of five times square root of five is five. The twos cancel, or you can do ten divided by two. You end up with five. The area of that triangle is five. Now what I want to do is find where the midpoint of any line segment is. So as in the case before, let's say we're given two points out in the plane, and we know the coordinates are x1, y1, and x2, y2. We know how to split the difference, or sorry, the, we know how to find the distance between the two. Now what we want to do is, can we find where that midpoint is? What's exactly halfway in between those two? And we're going to just borrow some knowledge that we have from our previous courses. We want to find what's halfway in between two numbers. All we have to do is average those two numbers, which basically add them up and divide by two, and that finds the midpoint. So to find the midpoint of two points, instead of just finding the halfway spot between two numbers, you want to do it between two points, you're going to still average, but you're just going to average the coordinates. That is, you would take x1 plus x2 and divide it by 2. That's halfway in between the x's. What's halfway in between the y's? y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay, so in this example, if point 1 here is negative 3, 2, and that's x1, y1, and point 2 is x2, y2, 6, 0. And then the midpoint will be negative 3 plus 6 divided by 2 and 2 plus 0 divided by 2. Just taking x1 plus x2 divided by 2, that gives me 3 halves. 6 to minus 3 is 3. 2 plus 0 is 2 over 2 is 1. So the point 3 halves, comma 1 are the coordinates of the point that's halfway in between those two. The last example I have in this section is a question regarding the medians of a triangle. If you've ever heard of a median of a triangle before, what that means is that we're going to take the line segment that connects any of our vertices or vertexes of our triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So each of these three lines that are coming through the middle of the triangle are called medians. Okay? It connects a vertex to the midpoint of the other line. The question in this particular example is, can you find the lengths of the medians of the triangle that has vertices 0, 0, 6, 0, and 4, 4? Let's start by just plotting this triangle. So 0, 0 is here at the origin. 6, 0, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0 is right 6, up none, and then 4 to the right, and then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to be a rather lengthy problem because what have we got to find? In order to find the median of any of the vertices, that is, there are three medians, so we're going to have to do this three times. The median length from, say, point A, which was here, this was B, this was C. Let's say I wanted to find this median right here. I've got to know what is that point right there. Well, that's going to be the midpoint of BC. Okay, so how do we find the midpoint of BC? We're going to take the coordinates of B and C, and we're going to average them. So 6 plus 4 divided by 2, and 4 plus 0 divided by 2 gives me a 5, comma 2, which actually matches fairly well with what we see on the graph. Never trust your pictures, though. As you can see, I've already got some lines on here that aren't exactly straight, but... We can do our best, um, but analytically, using the formulas, we've now got the midpoint. Now, what's the length of this median right here? Okay, well, the length of that one, we'll call it M1 for median. The length of M1 would be the distance from A, which is 0, 0, to 5, 2, 
which is 5 minus 0 squared plus 2 minus 0 squared. You're taking x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 to get this formula, which gives me the square root of 25 plus 4, or the square root of 29. So we're one third of the way through with this problem. Let me do one more for you, and then I'll leave the last one for you as an exercise. Let's go from B to its midpoint of AC. So how do we find the midpoint of AC? Right. So the midpoint of AC is going to be the average of the two points A and C, which is, um, remember, C was 4 comma 4. So you have 4 plus 0 over 2 and 4 plus 0 over 2, or 2 comma 2. So now, if I were to call that M2, then the length of M2 will be the square root of 2 minus 0 squared. Oh, careful, careful, careful. Let's try that again. I think I had that right, but I was actually looking at the other point. What's the coordinates of point B? It's 6 comma 0, right? So no, I didn't have it right. So you're going to take 2 minus 6 and square that, plus, right, because 2 minus the 6 squared, and then 2 minus 0 squared, which gives me the square root of 16 plus 4, because negative 4 is square root of 16, equals the square root of 20. Okay, so check the last one as an exercise. Now, what do you get if you do that, just so you know that you got it right? So I'd pause the video, go check it, or take the answer and make sure you can get there. So the answer to the last midpoint would be square root of 17. By the way, we should actually have reduced this. This is two square roots of five. That's the preferred answer for that one. All right, that's the end of lecture one, distance and midpoint.